For those of you watching today, you may be concerned that we might be stuck in a bit of a time loop. <laughs> but I can assure you, you are not stuck in a time loop. This is just fortunately the very circular direction of, uh, well, British politics as a whole at the moment. And Boris Johnson has now firmly returned to the position that he once occupied. That is, of course, he is now on the back benches. But, of course, he is now free to start hurling thunderbolts at whoever may particularly be on the front bench, criticising, of course, anything that the Conservative Party does regardless, even if at one point he was doing the exact opposite and advocated for the exact opposite doesn't matter because, you know, you're Boris Johnson, you're sitting on the back benches, you've got no responsibility. You're just there to bring in the money and be a cheerleader if asked to be. And that is what Boris Johnson's position really in the Conservative Party always was. It was to be this cheerleader, to be this champion and backing up whoever just happened to be, well, the current leader at the time. And that is the situation he has returned to. But of course, Boris Johnson got big ideas, big ambitions. I want to be the leader. I want to be, um, you know, prime minister. And of course, we've all seen how that story turned out. But Boris Johnson has now squarely returned, and especially with this comment that he's made very recently, has fully returned back to square one. And of course, as we can certainly worry about later this year, Boris Johnson will try to return to head and at least maybe even lead the Tory party. But of course, the polls, shall we say, certainly say other things. But that's a situation that will certainly arise when that happens. But into this, because Boris Johnson, as we said, has been throwing some thunderbolts from the back benches. And this time he is trying to say that the Conservatives need to make the case for a low-tax global Britain. Now, where have we heard this before? <laughs> where, where have we heard this before? Hmm. <laughs> but before we go diving uh, into Boris's latest comments today, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, please do remember to ring the bell as well so you get notifications of when we uh, re release a new video or when we go live as well. Also down below, there are links to my Patreon page, my one-off station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. There is the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there's the Pony Club as well. So as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel, even if you do just hit the like and share button. And of course, as always, guys, thank you very much to all the support that you show the channel. So over we go today to politics.co.uk to have a look at Boris Johnson's new comments now that he's on the back benches. Now he doesn't have any responsibility, he can just start hurling comments out left and right regardless. And to be honest, at the end of the day, it's probably whoever's, shall we say, scratching his back to make him say those particular comments. Like I say, if you've been following the current chaos in the Conservative Party, you will very quickly recognize a lot of the comments that Boris is about to make. So, the Conservative Party must make the case for a, quote, low-tax global Britain and fight the next election on a pledge to cut taxes, the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson said on Tuesday evening, whilst he's been uh, viewed as a fresh challenge to Rishi Sunak. So... <laughs> You, you, you were Prime Minister Boris. You could have, you could have pursued this. You could have done this yourself. Why did you not do this when you were Prime Minister? If this is the case, you are advocating the Conservatives should make. Why didn't you make the case yourself when you were Prime Minister? <laughs> Speaking at the Carlton Club, a members only club frequented by conservative politicians the former mp also urged sunak to press ahead with a new law to override the northern ireland protocol and resolve the brexit impasse in northern ireland of course we know what that would lead to that would lead to a trade war and especially the us would not be very pleased because this would damage the good friday agreement because the Northern Ireland Protocol is specifically has said you cannot have a border between the North of Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, and 
you've got to have one in the sea because that is the only viable place where you can technically have one unless of course the rest of the UK is in the customs union and single market which of course leads us back to uh, Theresa May's backstop proposal even again itself wasn't necessarily perfect was actually the proper and correct solution for all of this and of course um as Boris Johnson said, you know, he, he would never countenance a border in the Irish Sea, which he, of course, he went on to did to do with his own Brexit deal, throwing the DUP under the bus after they very cleverly uh, decided to aid him uh, in getting rid of Theresa May uh, and her um, Northern Ireland uh, solution. It, 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 it's, it's like we're travelling back in time. <laughs> but... Um, he continued, all this continues with, Mr. Johnson was officially at the Carlton Club to unveil a portrait of himself. Hmm. The comments will be seen as applying further pressure uh, of Sunak, which supporters are describing the inter interventionalism of Johnson's most politically charged since leaving office. Addressing club members on Tuesday night, Mr. Johnson told his party that it, won't, that it must, quote, never give up and keep, keep fighting keep backing the government, keep making the case for levelling up, for opportunities, and for the dynamic uh, low-tax global Britain that is how we will win again. And it's... Oh, oh. So, you, it's been a while since we've done this, so we'll have to go over this again. But for those of you who may remember, we always said very, very clearly, you cannot engage in this levelling-up plan while also wanting to do this low-tax global Britain, because the two ideas are completely incompatible with each other. Because if you go for levelling up, that means you can't do global Britain, because that undermines you know, the stuff that you want to do with global Britain. But if you pursue the path of global Britain, you cannot pursue the opportunities that levelling up would do, and the stuff that is, is to do with levelling up, which they always talked about. You cannot do both at the same time. One will always undermine the other. And of course, they always went for the low-tax global Britain growth route. That's why, again, levelling up was doomed to fail. That's why we've seen it fail. And of course, Boris Johnson, back to his old tricks of, you know, fool them with levelling up while really pursue the low-tax global Britain, which, of course, no one really wants. <laughs> because it's this free market fundamentalist ideology which is not popular in the UK. Anyway, back to it. So alongside the forecast that inflation will, quote, come down dramatically and that China will get through COVID and, quote, Putin will lose in Ukraine, Mr. Johnson said that the Conservative Party will recover. He continued, because when the moment of the real electoral decision approaches, and it will, people will realise that there is only one party that yearns to reduce the burden of tax. But, again, they, they have to sort of say why reducing tax is a good thing. And we've seen for the past 12 years what the what has, what has been the cost of reducing tax. It has led to worse public services. And the thing is, people in the UK, even Tory voters, want good public services. And if you want to fund those public services, then you have to pay them through taxes. Even Boris Johnson during the pandemic was doing exactly that. And he was called unconservative. But this is why I've said now he's just to be, I think really now Boris is just set to become a massive hypocrite, even criticizing things that he did during when he was prime minister. But of course, oh, that would, doesn't matter. That doesn't care. Anyway, we'll continue. He said, uh, there is only one party that Rue believes in extending the joys of home ownership. Well, you haven't actually built those home homes, nor have you aided in that ability, but there you go. And there is only one party with the guts to stand up to the union barons. Well, that's not going very well for you, to be honest. I think even if Boris Johnson was still prime minister, he wouldn't be having a good time with this at all. Uh, moving to Brexit, Mr. Johnson said that was, quote, only one party, the Conservative Party, that believes in a union with Northern Ireland and will pass the necessary laws to protect the in economic integrity of the UK. But of course, there are going to be consequences for that, you know, Chuck Boris. You know that. 
but there you go. Uh, like I say, those will be those will be fun when when that law comes to be. And of course, we've obviously got the the news this week that there has been progress, of course, regarding negotiations in around the protocol. Um, we'll have to see how these go and how certainly the Brexiteers react, shall we say, when all the dust settles in around those negotiations. He also added, there was only one party that will dare to say, uh, or at least dare to do what is necessary to disrupt the, quote, evil gangs and send people across the channel in unworthy vessels by sending illegal immigrants to Rwanda. That, that That's bizarre in itself. So you're going to punish the evil gangs by the sending the people they send in the unseaworthy vessels by sending them to Rwanda. Again, the whole Rwanda plan, uh, as you said, has lots of problems. Even Rwanda itself, not exactly good when it has a good track record when it comes to uh, treating uh, immigrants and the way that they've treated them. And of course, you've only got to look at what happened to the Australia who did this, or even uh, Israel that also did this as well. It didn't end well for them. In fact, it ended in multiple human rights abuse allegations. Um, that, unfortunately, could be very well the same route that happens in Rwanda as well. Um, yeah, like I say, there, there is a reason why the Rwanda itself does have a big page on Amnesty International uh, with their human rights abuses that their government has committed. Um, yeah, we should be really concerned about sending people to there, to be honest. Um, it's not a good look, and it's not going to end well, unfortunately. And, of course, he continues... And there is only one party that really believes in Brexit. Well, uh, he, again, you might actually say to what that Brexit actually is, but of course, this is Boris going back to his old Boris uh, lines. Uh, you know, this is this is like typical pre uh, Prime Minister Boris here. For those of you that have been around long enough, I am certainly recognizing it. <laughs> And, of course, its potential to transform the economy of this country. Well, it certainly has been transforming the economy. That is definitely, uh, for sure, certainly for the worse. And, of course, only one party continues uh, that will continue to make use of the Brexit freedoms from the financial services to genetic engineering. And, of course, those regulations, those financial services regulations, are actually going to make the UK far worse off if there is another financial crash. And many people say there is potentially one coming around the corner. Um, Again, in with regards to jetting and engineering, um, okay, but what exactly do you want to do? What exactly are those regulations that you intend to change? Of course, this is what we've said before. Whenever it comes to these talks of regulations, they never discuss what regulations exactly or even want to get into the conversation of why some of these regulations exist in the first place. He said, when people realize this, I think the political dynamite is going to change. There is no desire to vote for Keir Starmer or the Sir... Um, uh, Sir Crasher Rooney uh, snooze fest. All right, okay. Um, Mr. Johnson's latest innovation comes as fresh allegations emerge that the former PM lied to MPs about Partygate. A source told ITV that the former Prime Minister joked that he was, quote, at the most unsocially distanced party in the UK and leaving uh, and at the leaving due held during the COVID pandemic. ITV said that it, when it put the question to the former Prime Minister, who was pressured by his party into announcing his departure from Downing Street in the summer, uh, the former Conservative leader, quote, did not deny uh, saying it. The claim is part of a number of new allegations made in an ITV podcast, podcast called Partygate, The Inside Story. And of course, I think we're in for a load of new Partygate revelations. Um, that is certainly for sure. Um which I think is certainly going to sink Boris Johnson. I, I think this is absolutely going to sink him because there's a lot of people in the Conservative Party who do not want him back. Remember, his polls were on the downward swing. They were absolutely on the downward swing. He would have lost. He would be just be in probably potentially even a worse um, situation, especially with these allegations floating, running around. This is the last thing the Tories want. And to be honest, if you even ask, if the Tories are even stupid enough to bring him back, all this is just going to re re-emerge. People have not forgotten. It's just going to reignite people's anger that they've put him back in, that they've put this completely irresponsible man back in charge, in power, into one of the most powerful officers of the land. He did not do a good job. His uh, 
cabinet did not do a good job either during the pandemic. And certainly his tenure as prime minister was certainly not a good one because he's followed on from more and more Tory failures that have, have taken place since they took office. And yeah, he, he you know, we can only hope that they certainly do take an absolute drubbing at the next general election. Because to be honest, if the polls turn out to be true, the Conservatives are going to be absolutely wiped out. And I think if they put Boris Johnson back in place, that ain't going to save them. But there are some Conservatives, namely, of course, Nadine Doris, who are desperately trying to put Boris Johnson back in place because they still believe that Boris Johnson has this magical election magic. Well, I tell you what, given the by-elections that took place, certainly under his premiership, um, that election magic wore off pretty quickly. After the whole by-election that took place not too long after the 2019 general elections, um, yeah, the, bear in mind the Conservatives did not win a single by-election, bar that one. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it wasn't looking good. So the idea that, you know, Johnson can sort of go back to essentially you know, classic Boris, just, you know, throwing thunderbolts, being this, you know, party cheerleader, saying, you know, all this, you know, typical stuff. Um, not really going to work for him, to be honest. Now, I think people have really seen that the game is up. And to be honest, no one would ever, I think, put him back into a serious political position ever again. They would absolutely have to be out of their mind to do so. But as always, it is the Tory party. Who knows what crazy crackpot ideas they'll come up with next. Um, like I say, uh, reference, again, Cozy Kratang and Liz Truss. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, there is no, shall we say, love loss, uh, love loss between those two as Kratang is desperately trying to distance himself and salvage uh, his own political career from the disaster that was uh, Liz Truss. And even she is trying to replicate Boris herself by, by making her own uh, crazy speeches recently. Um, so, yeah, uh, certainly fun times ahead uh, happening in the Conservative Party, that is for sure. As, of course, we've always said, there is a civil war coming, who I definitely suspect Boris Johnson will be a primary player. Of course, that is if he loses his seat, of course, with these Partygate allegations, and there is every possibility he could do just that. So, as always, guys... Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, um, an optimization link called Buy Me Coffee, the thank you button, and of course, the Pony Club as well. And of course, guys, thank you very much for watching. And of course, let me know what you think down below as well. Is this the return of classic Boris, the pre-premiership Boris? It certainly does seem like it, that he's trying to sort of get back to that old position because those lines are as, as classic Boris Johnson as you can possibly get. So. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching, and of course, we'll see you all next time.